Arsenal is one of the biggest football clubs in the world, but did you know how they got to where they are? Stay with us to learn the entire history of Arsenal in just 10 minutes. But before we get into it, please like and subscribe to help us on our journey to 1,000 subscribers. This is the entire history of Arsenal in 10 minutes. In October 1886, a Scotsman named David Danskin came together with 15 fellow munitions workers in Woolwich to form Dial Square Football Club, named after a workshop right in the heart of the Royal Arsenal Complex. Each member contributed financially to help form the club, and just two months later, on the 11th of December 1886, they played their first game. Their first ever match was against Eastern Wanderers, and they won 6-0. By January 1887, the club was renamed Royal Arsenal, and even though they spent most of their time playing on the manor ground, the club's first official home was Plumstead Common. During their time in southeast London, the club won the Kent Senior Cup, the London Charity Cup, and the London Senior Cup. This was before they turned professional in 1891, making them the first London club to do so. Even though things started considerably well for Royal Arsenal, the club became a limited liability company in 1893 which led to being renamed for the second time. The club's new name, Woolwich Arsenal, was registered with the Football League in 1893 after their ascension. They were the first Southern member of the Football League, starting in the second division and moving to the first division in 1904. Due to several reasons, the club's financial situation got even worse, and they almost went bankrupt in 1910. It took the involvement of businessmen Henry Norris and William Hall to save the club's downward spiral and move them elsewhere. In 1913, the club moved to the new Arsenal Stadium in Highbury just after their relegation to the second division, their only relegation from top flight football in their entire history. In 1919, the Football League controversially vote to promote the Arsenal to the first division after they finished fifth in the second division's last pre-war season of 1914-1915. Gradually, the club started dropping the THE from their name in official documents, eventually changing the club's name from THE Arsenal to Arsenal. With a new stadium and first division football at last, Arsenal's attendance doubled rapidly, and their budget experienced the same effect. With an increased budget and record-breaking spending, Arsenal was nicknamed the Bank of England Club. With the big bucks flowing in, Arsenal was able to lure over iconic Huddersfield town manager Herbert Chapman to their side with a record-breaking salary offer in 1925. Herbert Chapman immediately went to work with the appointment of a new trainer and the signing of some big talents like David Jack, Alex James, Cliff Baston, and Eddie Hapgod. He also implemented the WM formation, or the 3-2-2-3 formation, which served as the bedrock to his success. Through Chapman's numerous changes to the club, Arsenal went on to win the FA Cup in 1930, and they followed up with league championships in the 1930-1931 season and the 1932-1933 season. The club looked like it was bound for more success under Chapman, but right in the middle of the 1933-1934 season, Herbert Chapman sadly died of pneumonia. After the death of Herbert Chapman, the Gunners' management fell to his colleagues Joe Shaw and George Allison. As the popular saying goes, only the student has the hope of surpassing the master, and that's exactly what Shaw and Allison did. The duo went on to win a hat trick of league titles in the 1933-1934, 1934-1935, and 1937-1938 seasons along with a 1936 FA Cup trophy. After what looked like a cascade of endless trophies for Arsenal, World War II began, which meant the Football League was suspended for seven years. The war took a huge toll on Arsenal as the club had more players killed than any other top-flight club, and they incurred a significant amount of debt which bled their resources massively. During this period of crisis, the club found a way out through Tom Whitaker. Despite the team's limited resources, Tom managed to gather a successful and highly skilled Arsenal side with a playing style that brought great joy to the fans. In his first season as manager, he won the league title in the 1947-1948 season, equaling the Champions of England record. He won Arsenal's third FA Cup trophy in 1950 and a record-breaking seventh championship in the 1952-1953 season, which made Arsenal the most successful club in English history at the time. Even during their awful crisis, Tom found a way to keep smashing records for Arsenal. Speaking of smashing, if you're enjoying this video so far, please smash that like and subscribe button to support the channel. 
Now, let's get back to the video. After it looked like Arsenal had made a successful rebound, the club went through another trying phase, where they failed to win the league or the FA Cup for 18 years. The Gunners spent most of the 1950s and the 1960s as a mid-table club. After a period of mediocrity, Arsenal appointed the club's physiotherapist, Bertie Mee, as acting manager in 1966. Mee led Arsenal to their first League Cup finals in 1967-1968 and 1968-1969. He finally found a breakthrough the next season after winning Arsenal's first competitive European trophy, the 1969-1967 Intercities Fairs Cup. The next season got even better after Arsenal won their first league and FA Cup double, followed by a new Champions of England record. After a historical high point for Arsenal, the club went through another trying phase characterized by a series of near misses right up until 1979, when they won the FA Cup with a last-minute 3-2 victory over Manchester United. It wasn't until 1986, after the appointment of George Graham, that Arsenal experienced success once more under his tutelage. Arsenal won their first League Cup in 1987, Graham's first season in charge. He followed it up with the 1988 Football League Centenary Trophy and the 1988-1989 Football League title. Graham won another league title in the 1990-1991 season, losing just one game, won the League Cup and FA Cup double in 1993 and the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1994. After his spell of success, Graham's reputation was tarnished after he was found to have taken kickbacks from an agent for signing certain players, and he was fired in 1995. After looking like the club wasn't going to find Graham's replacement, Arsene Wenger arrived at Arsenal in 1996, and he completely revolutionized the club. After acquiring key players like Patrick Vieira and Thierry Henry from Wenger's homeland, Arsenal won their second league and cup double in 1997-1998 and a third one in the 2001-2002 season. Even with his immediate spell of success with Arsenal, Wenger's greatest moment came in the 2003-2004 season. Wenger did the impossible with Arsenal in the 2003-2004 season by lifting the Premier League title without losing a single match. In a season that has been iconically dubbed the Invincible season, Arsenal went on a run of 38 league matches, 26 wins and 12 draws to lift the Premier League trophy. The Premier League marked this iconic feat with a once-in-a-lifetime Premier League Golden Trophy to reward Arsenal for their impressive achievement. During Wenger's first nine years at Arsenal, the club either finished first or second in the league, although they never won the Premier League two seasons in a row. Arsenal had never gone beyond the quarterfinals of the Champions League, not until the 2005-2006 season when they became the first London club to reach the Champions League final in the history of the competition, but eventually lost 2-1 to one to Barcelona. In July 2006, the club finally moved to the Emirates Stadium after spending 93 years in Highbury. Wenger went on a run of successful campaigns, mostly winning the FA Cup trophy, which led to Arsenal becoming the club with the most FA Cup trophies in the history of the competition after winning their 13th in the 2016-2017 season. They also finished 5th that season, making it the first time Arsenal ended the season outside the top 4 since Wenger's arrival in 1996. In his 21st and final season with Arsenal, the Gunners finished 6th in the Premier League and won the Community Shield marking the end of the Wenger era. After the exit of Wenger in 2018, Arsenal struggled to win trophies even with the appointment of a top manager like Unai Emery in May 2018. The Spaniard became Arsenal's first head coach and second manager to manage the club from outside the United Kingdom. In Emery's first season, Arsenal finished fifth in the Premier League and as runner-ups in the Europa League right before the Spaniard was fired in 2019. The Mikel Arteta era has drawn mixed opinions from Arsenal fans. While some Arsenal fans believe he is the right manager to lead them into their next successful phase, some believe he has had enough time to do so. After the appointment of the former Arsenal captain in December 2019, Arteta ended the season by winning Arsenal's 14th FA Cup trophy, but finished 8th in the Premier League. In the 2020-2021 season, Arsenal finished in the 8th position once again, making it the first time they didn't qualify for a European competition in 26 years. So far in the five years with Arsenal, Mikel Arteta has won three trophies with the club, one FA Cup trophy and two Community Shields. Arsenal came close to winning the Premier League title in the 2022-2023 season, but lost their momentum at the end of the season to finish second. This season, they have a chance to win the Premier League and or the Champions League, 
Will Arsenal stop Man City from winning their fourth straight Premier League? Will Arsenal win their first ever Champions League? I guess we'll have to wait and see. So, there it is. Everything you need to know about Arsenal history. If you'd like to know about another club's history, let us know the club in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.